Okay, in our previous videos, uh, we had an introduction to representing objects in what we called views, more specifically the three-view orthographic projection. <clears throat> and uh, what we're going to take a look at before we get into any more complicated objects, we're going to have an intro introduction to what's called dimensioning and tolerancing. And what we're showing here is a two-view orthographic. Um, in this case, the uh, for this object, it's a square plate with a hole in the center and what appears to be the center. And um, we could have a right view over here, but I didn't bother with it because this object is square. It's actually fully defined by these two views. Uh, and for the purposes of today, we are only going to be concerned with what we need for dimensioning. So, what is a dimension? Well, dimension, the, the, if you think about the views, the purpose that they serve, they display and convey to us, the reader of the print, what the object, the shape of the object. But in order to manufacture this item, we need to know some more information. And specifically, uh, what dimensioning and tolerancing will convey is the size. So in this case, we have what looks to be a flat plate. Um, and if, if we imagine we were going to make this block, first thing we would need to know is how thick is it? And the way that's conveyed is the drafter will draw two extension lines from each of the, the top and the bottom surface that makes up the thickness of this plate. And between those, he will put an arrow. And a dimension. And in this case, our plate is one inch thick. So he draws 1.000. Now, these arrows could be either on the outside or the inside. They could have been here. Okay, that would be perfectly legal. Um, <clears throat> typically, the smaller the object, the dimension gets, uh, then you start to see the arrows on the outside. Um, and on the larger dimensions, the arrows will be on the inside. It also would be acceptable for him to dimension it in this fashion. with the dimension on the outside and the arrow on the inside. Or he could put both the arrows and the dimensions on the outside. Okay, and again, that preference is dictated by the size of the dimension. So typically, you, you want to represent the dimension this way. Uh, but either of these are acceptable as the dimension gets smaller and you just can't fit physically fit the arrows in the text inside of the extension lines. So at any rate, I'm going to draw that again because we've cluttered that up. So we have a one inch dimension here. And that tells us that we need to go get a piece of material that's one inch thick or at least one inch thick in order to start making this item. Well, the next thing we need to know is what are the dimensions of the outside edges, right? The length and the width. Well, in this case, this block is four inches long. And conveniently, it's also four inches wide. So, with that information, we now know that we need to get a one-inch plate, and we need to start at least with a piece of plate that is no less than four inches long and four inches wide, or four inches square. In addition to that, we see that we have a hole in what appears to be the middle of the plate. So the drafter would give us a circular dimension, and again, the arrows 
could be on the outside or the inside depending on the size of the hole in this case they're going to be on the outside and then he would say that this is a 0 0.750 diameter he could also represent this and it's more common nowadays to represent it with a diameter symbol and then the, the, the number 0 0.750 okay either of these you would see on drawings depending on whether they are newer or older drawings now also because this hole goes through we can see that by the hidden lines but frequently they will assist us by annotating through after the dimension of the hole and yes they will spell it that way and that just indicates by looking at the dimension without finding the f hole in the other view that tells us right away that yes this hole gets drilled all the way through the part now the only other dimensions that we need then to define this part are the location of the hole and since this is in the middle the hole is going to be located two inches or half of the overall length from the left edge and two inches from the top edge so with those dimensions represented on the drawing we would be able to make this object completely we have a thickness of one inch we've got a four inch square rectangle and then we have a three quarters of an inch or a 0 0.750 inch diameter through hole drilled in the center or more precisely two inches from the top edge and two inches from the left edge <clears throat> and these everything in red are what we call dimensions now there are more types of dimensions but we are not going to cover those today this is an introduction so we, we can hopefully very soon